just going to give it a second. Yeah, it looks good. Kia ora tato. Welcome back to another Q&A here at Digital Boost. I'm Georgia Hatches. Today, I have the pleasure of hosting Jasper Hallamore, and we are going to talk about ChatGPT. Hey, Jasper, welcome. So here's the thing about today. I have really pushed this month as our chat GPT month. I'm really excited about it. Jasper is going to be weaving his way through this month. This Q&A is pretty much an overview of the fundamentals of chat GPT. For those of you that think you've got a grasp on it, awesome. You're amazing, but everything keeps shifting. So we're going to give some foundational understanding about chat GPT. We're going to go into how you can use it for your business. It's going to be a dense Q and a, there's going to be a lot we're talking about. So I'm going to save Q and a questions for the end. Um, we will hopefully have some time, at least maybe some of those questions that you have will already be answered throughout the course of this presentation. If not, We'll ask them at the end. We'll see. Jasper, are you okay if we go a little over? How's your time for today? Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm fine for time. Yeah, so if we okay, go a little so, over, it's not a deal breaker. Okay, great. So we'll see how we go with questions and see if most of, if your any questions you might have might get answered. But if you want, if, if questions come up and you want to pop them into the Q&A, put them in there. I will see them. I just will not ask them throughout. I'll wait until the end to ask them just to let you know. And, um, and also... Remember that we have got workshops coming up with Jasper. We've got three workshops, Jasper, this month, and we are going to okay. be, yeah, so we're going to be more interactive. We're going to be diving a little deeper into ChatGPT, working on prompts, how you can use it for different top topics in your business. So please sign up for those. Even if you can't make it, you'll get a recording of those workshops. Um, but that's where we're really going to get into the mahi and really like, like work it out. Um, so Jasper, I'm going to let you take it away. Everybody else. Welcome and ask your questions. I'll, I'll answer in the end though. Welcome, Jasper. Thanks, Georgia. <laughs> Thanks for the introduction. I'll just screen, share, my, share my screen for everybody. So let me just do that. Everyone can see that presentation all right? Yeah, it looks great. All right. So ChatGPT and ChatGPT for business. So first off, I will just explain a little bit of who I am. So that's obviously a older picture there of me. I was a bit younger. It's aged a little bit since then, but it's all okay. So my name is Jasper Helmore. I am a proud New Zealander with roots deeply planted in the vibrant city of Auckland. Uh, my journey in the digital space has been spanning over the last eight years where I've sort of cultivated a rich blend of expertise as a no-code developer, while also diving into sort of the chat GPT slash AI specialists area. Now, in the ever-evolving digital landscape, I've dedicated myself to pushing the boundaries of what's possible, really specializing in creating solutions without having to use lengthy and time-consuming code. So my passion lies within the intersection of technology and creativity, where I bring ideas to life throughout the website and application development, while creating sort of unique business solutions that drive growth and efficiency. Now, my adventure has been marked by a relentless pursuit of knowledge, um, really around applications and AI technology, empowering it, really around empowering businesses to navigate those complexities of the digital age uh, with ease and confidence. And I think sort of my biggest mission is really bringing custom technology and making it accessible to businesses in New Zealand while also affordable as that's sort of been the biggest thing for New Zealand businesses around affordability when it comes to uh, sort of technology and AI. So let's just dive in now that we know a bit more about me and learn a bit more about what is ChatGPT. So ChatGPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And it represents an advanced evolution of the field of natural language processing. Now, that stands for NLP. You will have to hear the term NLP a lot. So that's what it actually means, natural language processing. Now, this has all been developed by OpenAI, and it leverages multiple sort of models around deep learning techniques and really producing close human-like conversation. Not perfect, but very close. Um, and it belongs to a broader sort of category of models known as transformers, which have a significantly advanced uh, the capabilities of machines and understanding the generative nat natural language. So before the transformers, you know, it was a bit uh, different. They were learned using more, um, what would be the, it was kind of before the AI side got introduced and it was around more learning the models and, 
Okay, I'm going a little bit off topic, so I'll move from that. <laughs> um, the model is uh, pre-trained on a diverse and extensive data set of text from the internet. So what that means is basically OpenAI trained uh, ChatGPT and their GPT-3 models, along with four, all on internet data. So they were scraping everything from articles to comments from all over the web and training it on that. And that's how it really started to learn how to talk like a human because it had all that data to be trained on. And what it does is it kind of gives it a grasp of a wide range of language patterns, styles, and context. And this sort of function, um, foundation training equips ChatGPT with a general understanding of language, uh, which it can then apply across various tasks without needing task-specific data. And when interacting with users, ChatGPT generates responses based on input it receives and effectively carrying out a conversation, which can be answering questions, composing texts, and even solving certain problems. All right, now the man you see at the top there is not me, that is Sam. So Sam is actually the founder of OpenAI. Um, a little bit of a juicy story and gossip. Last year, he did actually get kicked out of the company as CEO and from the board for about one week. Not a lie. And so that was a bit of drama. And then he got brought back that week. And next thing you knew, the board members, a lot of them were gone, the ones that uh, removed him. So that was a little bit of juicy information and drama to watch if you're in the OpenAI space and AI in general. So OpenAI is a prominent AI research laboratory, um, which is, there's not many, but uh, so their actual company is AI Research Laboratory. And it's really got a unique structure though, because it's comprising of both a non-profit entity, which is OpenAI Incorporated, and then also the for-profit subsidiary, which is the OpenAI AI LP. And the reason they did that is they still needed to make profit on one side, but on the other side is that they did have their main mission, which is about ensuring the artificial and um, general intelligence, AGI, which they haven't reached just yet, um, is really all about, against benefiting humans than anything else. Um, so they're trying to keep away from the corporate greed and people using it for the wrong reasons. And that's why they sort of had the non-profit area and focus around that mission. Now, OpenAI conducts cutting-edge research in machine learning and AI, aiming to develop and direct AI technologies in ways that promote global well-being. Uh, the organization has made significant contributions to the field of AI, including the development of advanced models like GPT-3, GPT-4, and engaging in various AI safety and policy initiatives. Now, for those that actually don't know, is that OpenAI didn't start with ChatGPT. Uh, prior to it, they actually had GPT-1 and GPT-2 is how we're at three and four. And prior to that, though, that wasn't open to the consumer market. It was around APIs. And it wasn't, they didn't really kick off until ChatGPT came out because it was a consumer-ready product. Uh, that's just a little bit of information there. All right. So we've got the co-founders of ChatGPT. So these guys are the co-founders. You've got Isla, who are still there. Greg and Andrej, and there is, you'll see this guy, I'm sure everybody knows, Elon Musk. Now, surprisingly, he was actually part of the initial project. Um, I believe he left a bit before ChatGPT came out, so he was with the earlier products. Um, and yeah, he left, I think, just due to clash and vision. Um, as you could imagine, a sort of uh, open technology around safeguarding, and then Elon Musk with his uh, way of doing things didn't sort of align correctly. So uh, he left. And now, so language model, you're going to hear that term a lot. Uh, so a language model is a computational mechanism that predicts the likelihood of a sequence of words and tokens appearing in a given language. And these models are fundamentally to, um, to a variety of natural language processing, NLP, uh, tasks such as text completion, translation, summarization, and question answering. So by analyzing a vast amount of text and data, language models learn to structure um, that sort of the words in place to seem more natural and human-like. Now, the latest model is the GPT-4. So generative pre-trained transformer for that's what GPT-4 is. It is um, an advanced autoaggressive language model and it's developed by OpenAI, leveraging deep learning to generate text that closely mimics human, uh, human writing. So building upon its predecessor um, architecture, GPT-3, GPT-4 features a decoder-only transformer um, network with an extended content length. Now, context length is how much content, so words you can actually add and it can produce and you can give it, uh, for those that don't know. 
And so it increased that length and it also increased the amount of data it was trained on. So the GPT's original was 175 billion parameters, where GPT-4 was even more than that. I'm not too sure on the exact number. I don't think they released it. So this expansion um, enables GPT-4 to offer improved understanding, context retention and creativity and text generation. So like earlier versions of GPT-4 undergoes, um, so like, sorry, like earlier versions, uh, GPT-4 undergoes generative pre-trained um, predicting sequences, tokens based on the pre, um, sorry, the preceding tech context, but with the enhanced performance across a wide range of languages and tasks. All right, so natural language processing. Now I'm gonna be, this is gonna be very quick and I don't expect anyone to really understand these steps. Um, it's really just to show you that there's a bit of work that does go on in the background and it's not saying just instant and witchcraft. So we've got natural language processing is an interdisciplinary uh, subfield of the logistics computer science and artificial intelligence concerned with the interactions between computers and human language. Now, in particular, how to program computers to process and analyze large amounts of natural language data. So how it sort of works is it goes through these seven steps. And like I said before, I don't expect anyone to understand. So you've got sentence segmentation, the word tokenization, stemming, uh, lemonization, and then step word analysis, dependency parsing, and then part of speech tagging. And that's sort of the process that goes all in the background and pushes that to the front. Um, but we'll move on from that. <laughs> so we've got conversational AI. So conversational AI encompasses a suite of technologies enabling machines to simulate human-like conversations, engaging users through text or voice-based interactions now. So this field integrates several AI disciplinaries uh, to understand the process and respond to human language in a context relevant manner. So this is sort of the two options you would have. You can come in with a voice or you can come in with a text. Now, what it does is if you come in with a voice, it's gonna automatically, uh, the, sorry, the automatic speech recognition, and then it's gonna extract that actual text from the speech and then pass that into the next step right here, which is the natural language understanding. And once it's done that, that's when it's gonna push it off to the dialogue and natural language generation. And then it will push that to the front where you can see it. Um, or uh, if it's gonna go output as speech, it will then send that to a text-to-speech generation side and push it out as a voice. So very sort of uh, simple steps of how you can use conversational AI, either with voice or text. Now, understanding the tech. So you got automatic speech recognition, so that's speech to text. So you've got AI, yeah, ASR technology converts the spoken language into text, allowing machines to understand queries or commands voiced the natural language. Uh, this process is crucial for the voice operated applications, enabling them to interpret spoken words um, accurately and actually understand it. So then you've got the natural language understanding. So the NLU is a process by which machines comprehend and interpret human language into structure. Um, structured data. It involves understanding the intent and the meaning behind the user's text input, enabling the system to respond appropriately. Now, the NLU also um, allows conversational AI to grasp the context, manage the ambiguities, and process the user's request accurately. Then you have the uh, dialogue management and the natural language generation. So the dialogue management and natural language generation, let's call that the NLG, uh, key factors of the conversational AI stemming from interactions uh, for relevancy and coherency. Um, the dialogue management navigates the conversation direction, ensuring the response aligns with user inputs and contents. Uh, the NLG crafts human-like text and structures human information, enabling real-time context and specific response. Uh, then you have the text-to-speech, so that's the TTS. Technologies generate natural sounding spoken language uh, from text, and they can actually move it now where they have made it also mimic people's voices. So uh, I, it's a little off to the side, but let's just say you can give AI now about a minute's worth of your voice, and it's going to be able to replicate that very quickly. The more examples you give it, the better it can do, uh, to a quite scary uh, point. So um, that, so the TTS technology generates natural sounding spoken language from text, enabling the machine, machines to speak responses to answers in a way that mimics human patterns. 
Jasper, right. I'm not, I, I don't want to interrupt, but I just wanted to say a couple people, actually a few people have joined us late and there's some questions about like, is this just a technical conversation? So I just want to let, no. let everyone know as we're going through, we're going over the technical part of it. I know a lot of it doesn't sink in for those of us who are like, wait, I'm just trying to run an e-commerce site. I'm just looking for marketing help. We're doing this just so you get a, a foundational understanding of chat GPT to start. And then Jasper's going to get into like, how to use it for your business. So hang tight. If some of this just feels like, I don't understand, just you'll absorb what you can absorb and what, what you need to absorb. And then, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have workshops coming up where you can dive deeper and really get into this mahi. Um, and, uh, and then any questions you may have, we're going to, I'm going to answer them at the end. So I will hold on to some of these questions for you. Okay. Sorry, Jasper, go for it. Oh, no, you're fine. That's all right. It is uh, very technical. So yeah, anyone that doesn't understand it, don't fret. It's not necessary, but it is good to have an understanding of the technology you're using. Um, all right. So we've got uh, the training data. So training data is basically the forms of the foundation of algorithm and machine learning models. Um, so to make this a real simple way, they took all the data off the internet, <laughs> they took lots of words, and they just pushed it into the system. They started training it and training it. And then they took things further where they will be able to give it a prompt and they'll be able to give it the answer and also training on that data. So understanding what it should respond with as well. So not just giving it lots of words and articles, but also giving it relevant information on how it should respond to things. All right. Um, I'm going to skip this part. I think it's, yeah, it's going to be too technical. So let's dive straight into the ChatGPT for business. And so ChatGPT offers a versatile area of applications within the business sector. So harnessing the power of natural language processing um, to revolutionize how companies interact with customers, streamlining operations and enhancing the decision making process. So here's a few different, um, you know, areas that you'd be able to use it within a business. So you've got the customer service automation, you've got the personalized marketing and sales, uh, you've got the content creation and management that people know, I think the best is a lot of people use it for the content creation side. You've then got data analysis and insights. You've then got the human resources and recruitment training and development, internal communication, and language translation. Now, I don't feel that that's the only options there are. Uh, there's obviously plenty, um, but these are sort of the a few good options that would be able to work for business. So let's move on to custom service automation. So how it sort of works, you've got to imagine having a team that works 24-7 and never takes breaks, and it can talk to hundreds of customers at a time. And that's what ChatGPT really offers, along with OpenAI. And it means that you're able to... Really, uh, sorry, it means your customers get to uh, get instant answers any time of the day. So instead of the whole going back and forth by email, they'll just be able to get an instant answer, train on the data that you have. And it's not just about handling more queries, it's also about making each response feel personal. Um, we've all dealt with just the standard chatbot applications over the years, and they're just preset answers and questions, and it's not very personal. And usually you just go around in a circle and end up having a contact support anyway. So it really takes it away with a AI um, bot that sort of understands what they're answering, will go find that relevant information to give them the answer right in front of them, which is good. So ChatGPT can guide your customers just like a human would, so it can point them into the right uh, solution or giving them info thereafter, really. So ChatGPT handling the routine stuff really opens up your team to sort of do those bigger issues. At the end of the day, do things that um, AI can't and just get their date back so they're not... Uh, flustered with emails and customer service stuff. Then we got the personalized marketing and sales. So ChatGPT can take your marketing and sales efforts to the next level, and that's by making them a bit more personalized. Um, and how that works is you've got to imagine being able to send your customers, uh, your customer offers and messages that are tailored specifically for them without having to spend hours on research and segmentation. So ChatGPT can analyze your customers' behaviors, their preferences, their past interactions, um, really to craft messages that speak to them. And the more information you can actually give it about your audience, um, it would be able to create that, you know, more targeted stuff there as well. So, yeah, and it's like really just having a personal assistant for each one of your customers. So it's making sure they, uh, they get the deals and products that they're interested in and not just the same generic sort of, content that you're giving out to every one of your customers. And it will most likely see higher conversion rates due to that. 
Then you've got the content creation and management. So ChatGPT can specifically streamline the process of content uh, creation and management, making it easier for businesses to produce high quality, engaging content consistently. So imagine having an assistant that can draft blog posts, update social media, write product, um, product descriptions, or even create uh, informative articles on topics relevant to your business. So ChatGPT does, um, does just that by providing a base for the content and it can provide all the content um, but, you know, sometimes it's good for a base um, and it's really they're going to, you know, use your brand's voice uh, and audience needs as well. So the, say, the, the AI tool is not just about generating text, but it's also about understanding your nuances of your business and assuring that the content resonates with your actual target audience. So additionally, ChatGPT can also help organize and manage your content calendar, suggesting topics, scheduling posts based on trends and analytics ensuring your content strategy remains dynamic and effective. Um, by leveraging ChatGPT for the content creation and management, businesses can really save sort of time and resources, allowing them to focus on strategy and growth in other areas of the business. All right, then we've got the data analysis and insights. So ChatGPT can transform the ways that a businesses approach data and analysis and insights offering a powerful tool for making sense of complex data sets with, um, as we mentioned before, the NLP capabilities. So ChatGPT can sift through vast amounts of data to identify trends, patterns, and insights that we might not pick up, or you'd have to use a data professional to find that information. So it can actually do that for you if you provide the right information. So this means that businesses can ask ChatGPT questions about their data in plain English and receive concise, understandable answers. So, for example, you go, what products sold the most um, the most last quarter? And if it has that data, it would be able to give you that answer. Or maybe it would be along the lines of which marketing channel is providing the highest return of investment, and you would get a precise answers without having to dive into spreadsheets and database of, of yourself. Um, so this accessibility to the, to the data analysis, uh, sorry, <laughs> Democrat size insights across the organization, enabling not just the data scientists, but also the marketing, sales, and management teams. So it's a real handy tool across the board, um, not just for data scientists. Okay. So I'm just gonna get rid of a pop-up. There we go. Um, human resource and recruitment. So ChatGPT can significantly streamline your HR improvement process, um, making it more efficient and personalized. Imagine being able to you know, quickly sift through hundreds of resumes and applications, identifying the most promising candidates without actually having to manually review all that information. Um, on that topic, I had a client that did exactly that. And he, um, I built the platform for him, but it uses OpenAI's API to review um, basically all the CVs and compare it against the job and, and give each candidate a ranking of how well they fit for that position, um, along with things like interview questions and so forth. So you can really move into that sort of complexity um, to get answers around it. So ChatGPT can analyze applicants' experiences, skills, and qualifications against your job requirements. Um, help and focus on candidates who best match what you're looking for. It's like having sort of a virtual assistant that pre-screens candidates, saving you time and effort. So for existing employees, uh, ChatGPT can facilitate onboarding, training, or even performance feedback sessions by providing personalized interactive experiences. So it can also serve as a 24-hour, 24-7 um, HR assistant. Um, so answering any sort of policy benefit questions that is all around your company as well, as you can provide that information. Great. And then we've got training and development. So ChatGPT can improve the way businesses approach training and development. So they're offering a higher personalized and scalable solution. So imagine being able to provide each employee with a personalized training, um, training program that adapts to their learning space, style, and specific skills how they need to develop. So ChatGPT can analyze an individual's performance, identify areas of improvement, and then tailor training materials accordingly. So this uh, means that it's not a one size fits all when it comes to training sessions and you can sort of produce unique stuff for those uh, individual employees. Then we've got the internal communication side. So ChatGPT can improve internal communication within your organization, making it more uh, efficient and inclusive. So imagine having tools that instantly translate messages into different languages and act as an internal knowledge base, answering frequently asked questions about the company policies, projects, or even find specific resources. So this means time spent searching for information and, um, and more time focusing on productive work. 
So for team collaboration, ChatGPT can summarize key points from the lengthy email threads that we're all part of, um, or the meetings, and distribute these summaries to ensure everyone is informed and aligned. It's like having a personal system that keeps everyone updated, helps manage tasks, and ensures that no one is missing out on important information. Then we have the last one, which I'm sure we all know about, which would be language translation. So this is an excellent one for a lot of people. So um, due to ChatGPT actually operating across multiple different languages, whether it's English, Japanese, Korean, it's actually able to translate those across and does a really good job at it. So um, yeah, that's, uh, those are sort of the main uh, areas that I sort of identified where businesses can use ChatGPT. Now, a lot of you are thinking, how can I use it? Oops, sorry, how can I use it for my business? So using ChatGPT for your business. I've sort of got it down as uh, six steps of how you can sort of identify where things, um, where it could help you. So the first step is identify the repeatable tasks. So begin by reviewing your current operations to pinpoint the tasks that are repetitive and have a clear structure, because that's where AI performs best. Now these can range from these could range from you know customer services inquiries to content creation and data entry and analysis. So it's really just finding that content that's repetitive and that your um, employees have to do, and then you assess the process. So once you have identified the task that you want it to do, closely examine the process involved on your side as a human, because you're going to be able to replicate those processes, um, and then it will understand the inputs, the actions required, and the expected outputs. And with that information, you will be able to feed that to ChatGPT. Um, then you define the clear objection, um, objectives. So establish what you aim to achieve by automating these tasks with ChatGPT, whether it's reducing the response times, increasing customer satisfaction, or improving content output and having clear goals. Um, it's really good to just get an idea of what you want, um, and then you can really uh, understand if it's helping or not. Then you've got instruct ChatGPT. So with a detailed understanding of your tasks and objectives, you are now able to instruct ChatGPT to replicate these processes and provide ChatGPT with examples, rules um, on the desired format and the outputs. Um, then you really got to go through test and training. So I'd love to say that you do it once and it's perfect, but it's just not really the case. So implementing uh, ChatGPT in a controlled environment to its te um, test its effectiveness um, then monitor its performance closely, get the feedback and refine its uh, responses or processes as needed to align with your objectives. Um, and then once you're going to say something, Georgia? Yeah, I was going to say, so if just the testing and refining part, do you mean we're testing and refining within the same session? It's not like, oh, we're going to do this, send it out and then come back to it at another time. You mean like within, like you get an answer, yeah, and you're like, uh, oh, not quite there. Let's refine this. Or, yeah, I would do it like that, you know, within the yeah. session. I'll probably do a couple examples, see what it is, get an idea of what I don't like. And once you've done it, let's say if you get three responses and there's something that you don't like in there, you're most likely going to uh, know what's causing that issue. And it will be mm -hmm. somewhere within the prompt or the information you're giving it most of the time. Yeah. And then this is broad strokes for any business, like any, even if you're a sole entrepreneur by yourself, like this is, this works for all of us. Exactly. You know, it's just finding out where it can help you. Every business is different, guys. So, um, you know, you just want to sort of take a look at your business and just say, you know, where can this help? And then um, start doing the process. But um, and then once you've actually got it, though, um, definitely train your team, you know, show that actually educate them on how to interact with that, how to use it. Because if your team aren't using it, then uh, the whole thing was pointless at the end of the day, right? Um, <laughs> so there we go. Um, Next one, so custom GPT. So this is actually done with the GPT Builder and that was released later or could have been earlier last year. And the GPT Builder is a platform that allows you, your business to create sort of bespoke GPT models. I call them custom GPTs along with a lot of other people in the market. And this means that you can actually train a version of your GPT on your own data and your own instructions that it's going to learn, um, that it does that will learn, but also retain. So you don't have to keep on telling it the same information every time you start a new chat. It's actually a GPT really just configured for a very specific task. So um, how can it transform your business? So enhance personalization so you can achieve uh, unprecedented levels of personalization and custom interactions, uh, marketing communications and content creation. Your AI understands your audience's specific needs and preferences, enabling it to connect more effectively. 
Um, then you've got improved efficiency. So by automating tasks with an AI that deeply understands your business and nuances, you can specifically increase operational efficiency. Now, whether it's responding to customer queries, uh, generating reports and managing data, um, a custom GPT can handle those tasks for you swiftly. Then you've got the uh, innovative innovation and competitiveness. So developing a custom GPT model can be a key differentiator in today's uh, competitive landscape. It not only showcases your commitment to um, innovation, but also provides unique service and product for uh, your users. So let's actually take a quick look into custom GPTs. So I've got three examples I can run you through. So I'm just going to remove that if it goes out of the way. Sorry, I'm just going to pop up here in my way. Okay. Let's go like this instead. There we go. Okay, so this one here was actually for a client um, over in Australia. Uh, they're based in Sydney. So they were a real estate office. And what they needed was a article writer. So they went through very specific, uh, the director of the um, agency went through very specific sort of steps of what he does to create his articles. And then what we did in the back end or what I did was really create those steps and get it to follow that same procedure. So in this case, it doesn't really require much information. So you'll see this looks a little bit different, and it's because it's using a custom GPT. Um, so let's say we wanted to do an article about, let's see, um, 2024 fire. I'm just having to think, actually. <laughs> so a fast real estate agent, let's say buying trends, uh, 2024. So as you can see, it's just three words, buying trends 2024, and it should automatically do what it needs to do. So it can run a little slow. So first off, it's going to give me a few different options for the actual title of the article. So it's going to produce this five, if I remember. Yep. And so then let's say we're going to go with this one here. So let's say we go with number two. Then we're just going to drop that in there. And now it should begin writing the article. And what that does is, as you can see, it's already writing about Sydney and the real estate market. And it's because all that information is given to it within its actual, in the back end and what it should do. And it's really built just for this real estate branch. And um, that's sort of how this sort of works. So now that they, so originally it was taking them about probably 30 minutes to an hour to create um, their blog articles, where now it's just taking them a couple of minutes and just by doing about one, two, which will end up three different prompts. Uh, would be, the next one will be asking for the image. Um, but this is a, yeah, a very practical and common sort of use for custom GPTs and chat GPT. So then we have a next one. So this is actually one that I built as well. It's uh, called Bubble Genius. Now, for those that don't know, Bubble.io is a uh, no-code development platform that I use. And sometimes I have very specific questions around it. Um, yeah, so let's say I'm developing something new, something I don't quite understand. Um, that's when I will actually come to this chat GPT and ask it a question and it will give me extremely specific information all around just uh, this one platform that I develop with. Um, I'm not gonna use it because it would be a bit pointless as I uh, understand people here don't use the development platform. So you wouldn't really understand the answers for that one, but it's a, you know, it's a unique use case, um, as mentioned, which is sort of the whole point. Um, then we have the web wordsmith. So this was a trial run, if I remember, when I was first um, using ChatGPTs. And what this one was for was really all about writing the uh, writing SEO optimized content uh, for specific stuff. So let's just do a quick example that says write a post on CSS trends. Let's see. There we go. And it's searching its knowledge base. And the reason why I say searching my knowledge is because it's got PDFs that are all around the rules of SEO that were provided from Google. So um, for those that don't know, Google does release documents all around the uh, search engine optimization and uh, the best practices. So what, we, what I did is I provided it this actual PDF documentation in the back end. So it knows how to write extremely good um, articles that are SEO. Um, that it's, sorry, yeah, SEO friendly. Awesome. So those were sort of the three examples I got there. As you can see, it's just going off and you just need something simple as write a post. 
Now, I know a lot of people will be like, that's not um, sort of an option they have right now. And it's because that's a custom GPT, not a standard um, uh, chat GPT chat. Um, you, anyone with a paid GPT, a chat GPT account can make their own custom GPTs. Um, you will just see the option as the GPT builder. And they do have the marketplace as well, where you can go use plenty of free ones developed by people. All right, jump back into the slideshow. Next, so oh, as mentioned, uh, free and paid. So the uh, free one just gives you availability when it's low, standard response speeds, regular model updates. But if you upgrade to the chat GPT plus, um, it's available in high demand and you get the custom GPTs, the GPT builder, you also get image generation, faster responses and priority uh, access to new features. Um, if you don't have chat GPT plus, I extremely recommend it. All right, now a big one for a lot of people, ethical concerns of ChatGPT. So when integrating ChatGPT into your business operations, it's crucial to navigate the ethical landscape carefully to ensure um, responsible use and slide outline key on ethical considerations to keep in mind. So you've got the data and privacy security. So prioritize the protection of personal and sensitive data, ensuring that you that your use of the chat GPT complies with data protection laws. Um, for New Zealand, remember that we had the 2020 Privacy Act, um, which is a all around data privacy for businesses. So just make sure that you're always complying with that as is a pretty big one. Um, then we've got transparency. So if it's, you know, if your customers are interacting with it, just be clear that you are using AI um, and, you know, be clear that they are into, um, talking with AI. It's not a scary thing for people. They don't, uh, they're not afraid of it, but you know, you just got to be open and honest about the situation. Then you've got bias and fairness. So AI models, including ChatGPT, can really uh, propagate bias. And that's because you've got to remember they're trained on data. And that data that they're being trained on is human data. And as we all know, humans can carry a bit of bias to them. Um, so it can carry on, uh, it can actually pick that sort of stuff up. So um, be careful, uh, but also review what you're, what it's given you and what you're pushing out. Don't blindly just start pushing out content that you're not reviewing that ChatGPT has said, um, as you want to make sure that, yeah, there's nothing, you know, incorrect or bias in there. Um, so then you've got quality and accuracy. So regular monitor and evaluate the performance of your ChatGPT um, and just ensure that it's quality and it's still putting out the accurate outputs. Then you've got the ethical use cases. So consider the implications of uh, deploying ChatGPT for specific use cases. Avoid applications that can lead to deception, manipulation, harming um, of individual groups. Then you've got your ongoing evaluation. So the ethical landscape of AI is continuously evolving. So commit to doing regular reviews of your AI uses and practices and just make sure it's aligning with the current market and um, yeah, ethical. So what are your sort of options? Um, and so, so what that means is you've got the standard chat GPT, um, free or paid. And then you've got your GPT builder, which we just looked at before with those custom GPTs, where you can make it within chat GPT and create different uh, specific GPTs. Then you have the third option, which is the OpenAI um, API. And that's when you can actually connect your applications for those business applications, your own uh, built ones, directly to OpenAI's um, AI, which you can connect to chat GPT. Um, and that's by using the API that they have there. So that's sort of your three options of those. Now, what do I do? So when it comes to working with me, I sort of unlock the full potential of chat GPT for your business by specialized support and expertise. So if you're just sort of starting out or looking to enhance, um, you know, your, enhance your existing AI solutions, I'm here to sort of guide you on that. So the options are you've got ChatGPT training. So that's whether it's just a one-on-one -on -one thing, whether it's a team, whether it's a business. If you just need training and guiding, uh, guidance on really your unique situation, uh, that is something I can provide. Um, then you've got the custom GPTs using the GPT builder. That is a very uh, popular one, and it's where I can build sort of custom GPTs uh, for you and using the GPT builder. And it's all trained around, you know, your processes, your information, how you want it to operate. Um, then you have the bigger one, which is the AI application development. And that's when I actually default, uh, develop full web applications um, that usually integrate with OpenAI's API and do larger tasks that sort of ChatGPT can't do out of the box. Um, then you've got the ChatGPT and AI slash AI integration consulting. 
So that's just the consulting side. So whether it's anything else, whether you want to sort of look at, um, you know, whether you can implement in your business uh, or anything like that, then you can have a chat with me and I can have support on that. Now, in terms of getting in contact, uh, you've got jasper.studio as my website. Very easy to remember. And email address is jasper at jasper.studio. Once again, pretty easy to remember. So, all right. So that's actually the end of the, I went a bit quicker than I thought, but um, that's the end of the uh, presentation there. So thanks everyone for watching that. I will just stop sharing my screen. It Maybe. tends to go quicker when I'm not interrupting to ask all the questions and we've got <laughs> yeah. questions, which is good. Well, so we so we would have stretched out to the hour if I was asking the questions as they came up. So thank you everyone for your questions. Everyone else, if you've got questions now, pop them into that Q&A function. We're going to start going through these and seeing what we've got. Jasper, thank you. That was dense. That was a lot. And and I, I enjoy, I know a lot of people were like the technical, it's a lot. It's a lot to, I enjoy the technical aspect because I love to know what am I playing with here and why am I playing with it and how does it work? Um, and then you can you can implement it as as you need for your business. So we've got some questions. We'll start with what version of chat GPT is the free version? The free version. That's uh, GPT 3.5. Uh, so that's, yeah. So um, also known as cheap, uh, Turbo, if I remember correctly. Uh, 3.5 dash dash turbo. Um, so yeah, uh, that, but I think sometimes uh, they can give you access to GPT-4 on the free version, but um, I think it's extremely limited. Um, okay. But most of the time it's just the 3.5 version. Okay. And and that just that's just limited in its capabilities versus four. Yeah. Yeah. So four is um way more advanced. Uh but yeah, so GP chat, so the free version 3.5 is just the initial one. So that's the one that was sort of launched back in 2021, I think it was, or 22. So that's about where its data cuts off. And um there's a lot of things that it can't do when it comes to the image generation and stuff like that that the GPT-4 can. Okay, great. Thank you. So we've got a couple of questions that came up during that custom GPT part of the presentation. Is your data protected using custom GPT? Yeah, they don't train uh, on the GPT data um, that you put in with custom GPTs. So that is protected. Um, if, but it depends what you mean by protection. Um, because I know that, so let's say in terms of protection, they're not training their GPT on it. But it has been, there's people that spend a lot of time online, let's just call them hackers, if you want to name it, and for penetration testers, but they love to manipulate the AIs to provide them sort of information and actually do a bit of a game of, of it. Um, and what that means is that because the files that you put into knowledge and context, it is technically there and the GPT has access. So people can manipulate that AI to give them those files and that information. So if you're going to use that information, be think about it as, am I okay with somebody getting access to this document? Mm. If you're not okay with it, don't put it there. Okay, good to know. Um, all right, where is it getting the background data from? So that is, yeah, that's one of the, the questions. Background. Um, and what way? before the custom I think for maybe for the custom GPT part I think it's it's the question is are we upload you were saying uploading stuff into the back end for custom GPT yeah so what you can do is um when building a actually I might just go into it I can just show everyone how about we all go build a custom GPT I guess yeah fantastic sounds like fun I'll just bring up my area right, bear with me Oh, and really quick. Um, so this one specifically that mm -hmm. I just asked, it, um, follow up. This question was based on the Sydney Trends Post example. Ah, so yeah, so it got that data from the internet. So it's GPT-4, and that's what the custom GPTs use. They are capable of searching. And because of that, that's where it gets its up-to-date information from. And adding to that, there was another question about the Sydney real estate example. How much mm -hmm. work slash time goes into creating the background information for the Sydney real estate company? Um, for me, it didn't take very long. Um, it was really just getting some examples from them and me doing for, let's say, okay, for me, let's say five hours of complete time of uploading, testing, going to the client and then, you know, every, and all that sort of development process five hours all up. Um, if I think somebody without my experience was doing it, it would probably be around the 10 hour mark, I'd imagine. And it's because you would have to start 
figuring out how to work with um, the prompting and stuff like that, which you won't have knowledge in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then um, <laughs> I love this question. Did Jasper use chat GPT to write his slides? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, um, my writing, I, I'm not great at it. Uh, so what I tend to do is I will create the slides, give it the general information of what I want it to be there and get uh, ChatGPT to make it um, a bit nicer. Oh, but um, it is noticeable, but yeah. <laughs> fantastic. I'm honest, guys. I'm not going to lie about it. No, no, it's great. It's what you do. It's your job. So <laughs> might as well. Um, all right. Can AI listen to customer conversations we have and analyze the information we give customers and then create a database of information from that? All right. Um, can it be done? Yes. Can it be done out of the box with what ChatGPT has, um, like the platform? No. Um, you could do that, though, by creating a web application that utilizes the AI. Um, how that would work is you would have the recording and it would be a voice, most likely voice to text translation and it will automatically do that, you know, throughout the meeting or afterwards. And then you can, and then it can pass that information out to ChatGPT or the AI. Um, and then it would be able to, yeah, I guess go through that process. Um, so I think out of the box, you wouldn't be able to do that, but it is possible to do. So it's pop, probably what you're saying is then there's like a different AI tool that you would use to analyze. Would, um, and then you pop, yeah. do you think it would then? I would use <laughs> open AI's, I would use open AI's uh, API, but I would do the sort of uh, other aspects using, let's say, Bubble. I'd build it within there and it would do its workflow. So no other AI needed, but just the things that ChatGPT or AI can't do, I would do for it and then pass information along. Amazing. We do have some time. Did you want to go in? I, I don't know if anyone- Oh yeah, sorry. I just, I forgot. We started answering questions. Um, <laughs> no, 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 I know. I, but but yeah, if you want to go into building a, a, a custom GPT, but I have another question here. If you buy GPT-4, is that a monthly subscription? Uh, yes, it is a monthly subscription, $20 per month. Uh, for yes, yeah, so you got the free version, you got the pro version, which is $20 per month. And then you have the team version, which is where you can actually have an admin account and lots of team members that also have their own accounts. And I believe that's $25 per user on the business side. And is that USD or New Zealand? Ooh, USD, I'm going to say. Yeah. Okay, so it's about, American company. if I can do my maths right, that's about like 3 million New Zealand dollars per month. Yeah, around that. I've <laughs> so got about 60 cents extra to the dollar. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah. yeah, you'll probably be okay. looking at like $32. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. What do we got? Let's do this. Well, awesome. So and, this and, is just and a please blank. Continue to throw in your questions there. We'll, we'll answer them. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just um, what it looks like blank. So you can actually talk to it to um, create your GPT or you can put in the configuration details. So you've got the name here, the description. So that's just obviously basic name description of this custom GPT and then instructions. So instructions is where you're gonna give it all that sort of instructions around what it should be doing. So it should go through this step, that step, what it should do, shouldn't do. But then on top of that, you can give it extra capabilities. So like web browsing, uh, the image generator, and you can also do code interpretation um, as well. And then on top of that, you've got the knowledge base. And then the knowledge base is where you can actually start putting in PDFs and files and giving it that extra information. And that's where it can start pulling info from as well. But I have noticed that if you do start having a lot of knowledge, oh, you got a question, George? No, just really quickly, I want to be clear that this is the paid version, not free. Is that right? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah. You have to have the paid version of GPT uh, yeah, to do this. Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry, continue. No, you're right. Um, you're right. And, but what I have noticed is that if you use the knowledge files, it does have uh, issues with web browsing. It's like it gets a bit too flustered and it doesn't know where it should be getting this information from. So uh, be aware of that one. And there's also what you have here is create um, new actions. And actions actually gives it access to APIs, um, other third-party APIs and information and websites. And along with that, um, you can give it the action and give it a name so that you can tell it to do that action. And it knows to use an API call and so forth. So it's really extending its capabilities a lot further. Um, so, yeah, so that's sort of explaining about how it's sort of built and how we can get that information as well. So you've got your, your information, 
the uh, web's information and you got uh, image generation. But let's see, um, for people, let's say, that don't have a lot of that technical side, um, using the, the create here and having a conversation with the AI to build the AI um, works quite well. So let's say we'd go, um, I want to create um, a blog writer for the digital boost. Initiative. We'll say, yeah, let's just give it the quick information. You know, so now it's updating the information within the configuration. And it's most likely going to come back and say, do you like XYZ name? And while that's happening, um, quick <laughs> question about uh, if we put spreadsheets of sales data in there for it to analyze, is that information then public? It's not public, public, but um, so let's say there's no way, no one's going to be able to find it. But like I said, if they manipulate the AI to provide that information, then it becomes public. Um, now, there are security security ways around this. There's um, ways to stop it from ever providing information. Um, but I don't like to say ever because nothing's 100%. Um, so, but at the same time, for them to get that information, they would have to have access to your GPT. Uh, so let's say if you can go here, you've got everyone, anyone with the link, only me. So if you built this GPT and made it only for yourself, then no, no one's going to get access to any of those files because they can't even access the GPT. But then if you have everyone, then anyone can access it. And if they figure out how to manipulate it um, and give it that information, then they'll get access to it. Um, but a common one is just doing anyone with the link. And because it's a very unique link, not something you can guess, um, and it doesn't get indexed. So you'll be able to, um, yeah, share that, let's say, to your team. Um, but if you have a team account, you'd be able to do that within the account anyway. Um, but yeah. okay. okay, so uh, does that, that answer the question? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how about Digital Boost Blogger? That's good, no? So we're going to say good. And then I think it will create an image. Yep, there we go. So it's automatically going to create a little image for your GPT. I'm sorry for the wait, guys, but um, I can't make it go faster. <laughs> All right, so that's the image that it made. And just for this case, we we'll say, yes, great image. Now it's going to start moving on to what it should be doing. So it's going to start asking us questions. So let's talk about the kind of voice and tone it should use. Um, so, Georgia, what do you think? What is Digital Boost tone? And uh, I mean, voice? my tone and Digital Boost tone, very different. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say casual, maybe prof professionally casual, just so, and yeah, easy yeah. to understand. So now we've given it a bit more information. So it's probably going to go and update the GPT again. As we go. This is great. This is fun. And also yeah. this is the kind of stuff that we're going to get to do in the workshops as well as we're going to have. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So what we'll be doing in the workshops, just so everyone's aware uh, that's watching, is we were going to have uh, separate workshops with very specific um, niche, but we'll go through the GPT, but we'll go through chat GPT for the people that don't have access to it and really just, showing how we can do it in lots of different ways that will work for different people and how to get a bit creative with it as well. Um, and the reason why I say a bit creative is because you don't want to just sit with the general content that ChatGPT will give you. Um, it will look very, uh, I guess, like a lot of other people's content. So you want to give it that little bit of um, uniqueness to it. All right. So it's saying, let's discuss the topics and themes you're most interested in. Sweet. So Digital Boost Initiative is all about the digital landscape for businesses in New Zealand. There we go. And then once again, it's going to update that information. This is great. And this is stuff that we can do on our own. We don't. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. This is I would say the creating of the AI is definitely good for people that aren't very um, tech savvy or don't have, you know, the information of training it or telling it what to do. Um, 
All right, so let's just leave it at that for now. So let's say we've already got some examples here. So what it does, we come here and look now. So now this is all the instructions that it's given it. Um, that's what the AI wrote for this AI's instructions. So we've got AI creating AI at the moment, people. Um, and then this is some conversation starters that it's um, added. So let's just use one of the conversation starters. So if we go write a post about digital marketing trends, let's see what it does. And there you go. And automatically it says New Zealand. And why? Because it knows that the Digital Boost Initiative is for New Zealand businesses. And now this isn't something that I would just go release to a client just like this. Um, I would personally be, yeah, there'd be a lot more information involved. Uh, definitely when it comes to the instructions and how it likes uh, the content and how the client writes. But this is a really good example of just showing people how they can do it themselves. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be complex and you don't always need somebody like me to do it for you. Um, yeah. But it is nice having people like you in the world in case oh, it's yeah. overwhelming. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. It's really, a, you know, uh, how much is your time worth sort of thing. Um, so. Exactly. We've got, so another question while um, really quickly, can you use yep. previously created customer GPTs? I see in the explore GPTs, there are some public ones. How does it work? Yeah. So um, the public GPTs is the uh, GPT marketplace. So the, I think they've got a different name for it. GPT store, actually, I think it's called. Um, but they're created by people around the world and they're open for people to use. Um, so if they're, if they're released on the store, it means that you can use them for free. And um, yeah, that, that's just it. So they there was actually only recently released, I think at the end of last year or early this year. Um, but a few of my GPTs are on there and yeah, it's good. Amazing. I think the questions keep coming in. Once you have the information, can it be added mm -hmm. to a Facebook page? I mean, if I wanted to advertise my business on Facebook, do I just copy and paste from GPT to Facebook or do I create using GPT in Facebook? Thanks. Wait, can we do that question again? Sorry. Yeah, I think it's, I think you copy and paste. So once you have the information, can it be at, so let's say we, we've created this, you know, what our blog here, right. And I want to yeah. throw, I want to make it, I want to put it on my Facebook page. So oh, if, yeah, you would copy and paste, yeah. You would copy and paste. So, so. Yeah, it, let's say um, it depends on obviously what platforms people are using. But if, uh, if it was a blog post, I would log into my website's blog area um, and I would copy and paste this and then obviously clean up any sort of formatting uh, depending on how your platform does blogs. Um, yeah. Or even the advertising, like you, like you said, if you're marketing your business and you want to create a marketing post on Facebook, yeah. you, would and paste. You'd create, you would create the post using whatever information the um, open AI created for you. Yeah, you'd, yeah, you'd use that information and pass it over. Yeah, yeah. And But I, I will say for people that want to use it for social media posts, um, if you've already got a style, just grab some of your top uh, social media posts that have gotten the most interactions, the ones you like the most, copy the text and put it into either the instructions or the knowledge base as examples. And what it will do is that the, um, in, your, in the instructions, you just tell it to match that style. And it will reproduce content that is a lot like the content you've done yourself um, and switching it to make it work for your audience. Yeah, so. Alice, that might have just answered your question. We just had a question that came in um, okay. and I think this may have answered it, but let me ask it out loud just to see. All the times I've used ChatGPT for writing project, it has sounded very marketing, marketing-y. Yeah. Markety, for Markety. Uh, for lack of a better word, and it's quite obvious that it's been written by AI. Is there any way you can avoid that? Yeah, you got to tell it. Um, you know, when I even let's say you got everyone noticed that I was using AI for that um, for the presentation uh, prior to that, there was you know because there's buzzwords in there that I probably wouldn't use on a regular day, but there was more in there uh, prior to that. And you really got to inform it. And that comes down to uniqueness. If you sort of jump into ChatGPT and you say, write me a blog about X, Y, Z, it's going to produce very easily seen as AI content and most likely very generic and the same as other stuff. But that's why you've got to dive into, you know, your style, how you want it to be. And when it actually uses those buzzwords, sometimes I would just use the term dial it back. Um, I would say, look, dial it back. You're using way too many buzzwords. This needs to be like a, this sort of style and it will remove it and change the way it's doing it. Um, yeah, because it only knows what has been provided and what has been told in many ways. Mm. You need to crack the whip on that chat. GPT. Exactly. You got to crack tell, the whip. Tell right? it how to Don't do it. Slip. Yeah. yeah. Here's another. Say, here's well, another no, here you go. 
Yes, Great sir. questions here. Thank you guys for, for bringing these in here. If you screenshot an existing post, can you, can it read the text or do you have to actually type that in? So an existing social GPT media GPT-4 can, yes. So um, it can read the post. Yeah, you can. Um, I would probably just, if you have GPT-4, you can upload the image and say extract the text and it will extract it. Um, yeah. Wow, that's that's amazing. Okay. Well, we are at the hour. If you have any other we'll questions, oh, more questions. Does it take post from another blogger if you are using social media? Just take post from another blogger. If you're using, I'm guessing media. that's what SM means. If you're using SM, does it take yes. post? From, yeah. Um, doesn't take posts from other people. You can instruct it to if you like. Um, you can use, let's say, has been different styles of writing um, there where I'd find blog posts that I like the style and I'll get it to sort of match their style. Um, if you want to avoid it having, let's say, blatant copying, um, a unique way of uh, doing it is just find a couple of examples and then provide it to just ChatGPT and ask it to describe how it would describe that content. Um, and that tonality, that uh, the way it sees it. And it's going to give you a response of um, basically the prompt of the style and how to write like that. And then you can add that to your chat GPT when writing your own blogs because it now because it understands how it views that style of writing. Awesome. Um, could you give it your Facebook URL and ask it to analyze your style? Uh, yeah, um, technically, because GPT-4 has um, the web browsing capabilities, so it can technically go to the page uh, as long as it doesn't require logging in. Um, but personally, I think you would be better off just really adding in, in, into the knowledge area or instructions. Um, and the reason for that is you're basically making it do a whole extra action and type of search around um, you know web browsing when you could cut that whole process out just by having it in the knowledge base mm -hmm. and then it, it will always have that information instead of having to search each time and this is fantastic jasper thank you and thank you everyone for asking your questions if any other questions come up you can reach out to jasper uh he it was jasper at jasper.studio am i right that is correct yeah so jasper.studio jasper um, so easy also you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, there's only one Jasper Hallamore in the, in the world. So just type it in and there I'll be. Um, yeah, you can find him on LinkedIn. You can also reach out to us at support at digitalboost.co.nz. And if you want to get in touch with Jasper, ask us any questions um, and, and show up for these workshops. We've got three workshops coming up with Jasper. And Jasper, I I know you're sharing your time. This is, you know, our these guest experts that come on, give us their time for free. And I always appreciate it. I know we always appreciate you sharing your mahi with us. Uh, but I also want to say that I will rope you in for another one if there's a topic that we don't we don't actually dive deep enough into that maybe we want to yeah. explore in another workshop or in another Q and A. So make sure you reach out to me and let me know what you as our digital boosters want to see. Um, that's my job. I'm here to help get that information to you. And Jasper, you're, this has been amazing. This is so much information and I'm really looking forward to diving even deeper and getting like into the nitty gritty of how to actually hands-on use this work. It's great. Great, great to be part of it. And uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, and thank you everyone. Thanks. Go enjoy your day. Jasper, go enjoy your day and we'll be in touch. Um, and I will see the rest of you next time. Kakite.